Hi guys, I'm Al Gracian from elbowpepper.com and with the winter setting in, it's time to get into some more experiments, try out a few things for this year and see what we can learn. Something that kept coming to my mind is a comment that a user had posted over the summer. Uh, they said, if your material factory closes, you'll starve. And I think that's really a powerful point. I know that I personally do use products in my gardening, although I try to use sustainable methods, but uh, some things are more renewable, self-renewing than other things. Uh, it's difficult when you're growing on concrete and you're trying to do things in containers as opposed to when you're using an in-ground plot. So I definitely generate my own compost and my own vermicompost, but what if someday we go to the store, we go to some big box place, and they're closed. They're not selling anything. You can't buy seedlings. You can't buy seed starting mixes or any potting mixes. What are you going to do? Many of us may already have our own self-reliant system that we use, not relying on external inputs or products of any sort. At the same time, some of us may have no idea. If we can't go get that miracle Grow seed starting mix, well, how would we be able to make up something? I guess we could go get some peat moss, but if we don't live in Canada, or we could get some coir, but if we don't live in the tropics where coconuts are growing, you see what I mean? What is it that's growing in your area? What is it that's in your backyard? For me, in Western Pennsylvania in the United States, I can raise worms and use the worm castings as the source of nutrients. And then there are also some other resources that I could gather and use to try to make my own backyard, homemade, fully sustainable seed starting mix. So let's look at some things that I found and that I'm going to be testing in my first experiment. Okay, so I've gathered up some resources. Now let's look at what we have. First, some shredded up leaves. What kind of leaves are they, you ask? They're leaves. Second, I have some bean pods from some scarlet runner beans that I had kind of saved at the end of the summer and I shredded these up. Next, I have some bark from a grapevine that I shredded up a bunch of the branches. It was just going insane. So this is what I'm using for a mulch. And finally, I have some pine needles. And these are kind of shredded a little bit so that the pieces aren't full length. And there's a bunch of junk in here. Of course, we have one last ingredient. So let's look at that. Obviously, with the ingredients we first looked at, you're not going to grow seeds in that. But, with some vermicompost, aka worm poop, we have all the nutrients that we need right in here to be able to do a successful grow. So, the key is figuring out if we need maybe some of these other things to help with pore spacing, with water absorption, or anything else that maybe we're not really thinking about when it comes to looking at worm castings. To be honest, worm castings can be hard to come by. They're pretty pricey if you buy them at the store, and even if you're just making them yourself, well, if your worms are making them for you, it's still a lot of work to sift through those. So. You could try growing in straight worm castings, but what kind of results are you going to get? Is it going to be too much for the plants to be able to handle? And even if the plants love it, well, what if you were able to water it down a little bit, maybe by adding some other organic materials to kind of stretch it out, that way you can get more plants growing using any given amount of worm castings. Those are some questions that I'm hoping to be able to answer through this experiment. Let's look at how I've set up a couple of potting mix formulations built around only these components. 
For this experiment, I've decided to grow bok choy. It's a toy choy variety from botanical interests. I love this variety. I've grown it for a couple of years now. These are very small dwarf plants that grow quickly, and I think they're perfect candidates for this experiment. So let's look at what I've done to mix up a few different potting mixes. All right, let's go through the different containers. For our control, we're using pure worm castings. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Especially if you've done Googling on the internet, but we're gonna see how this works out. Also, 50% worm castings, and in fact, in all the rest of these, we're using 50% strength worm castings. And then the other materials make up the rest of the mix. So for this one, it's worm castings and leaves. For this one, the bean pods. For the next one, pine needles. This one, that bark, that shredded grape that I'd shown you. And then in this one, we use 25% of that bark with 25% shredded leaves. This one is bark with pine needles. This one, 25% leaves and 25% pine needles. And in this one, 25% leaves and bean pots. So, already you might be able to see I do have some germination and that's a good sign. All we need to do now is get them back in the grow room and take a few weeks to track the progress and see how these turn out. Okay, for our test bed, the seedling containers will be placed in this tray and periodically I'll water them from below by just kind of dumping a little bit of water, letting them soak it up, and then I'll also be spritzing them from on top uh, to make sure they stay nicely moistened. I'm using only artificial lights, this Apollo UFO, but also two 12 watt lights that just screw into a regular socket. These are purely blue as supplementation. So what do you think? Which of these is going to work out the best? Are any of these methods going to work? I'm actually now several weeks into this. It's not going to be very long for me to be able to share my results. But first I wanted to share the intro and to let you know how this is set up. That way when I do the follow-up video very soon, we can get right into the results. And I'll also be able to share what I'm planning on doing next. If you have any thoughts on which of these you think is going to be able to best grow the seedlings, share them below. I'm interested in what your hypothesis is and why. But um, like I said, we don't have to wait very long. And there is a definite distinction in what I'm seeing. So I can't wait to show you guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, guys, happy gardening.